You're watching us here on Chartbusters. I'm Mangalam Malu. With me, as always, Nigel D'Souza. For the markets, it is weak, and that's largely because of the Nifty Bank. It gave us hope yesterday, taking away those gains today. But uh, one sector which is doing well after the drubbing yesterday has been the FMCG pack, and let's talk about that itself. We have Godrej Consumer, which is one of the gainers uh, in today's trading session, and that's largely because of earnings that are not much worse than what the street was fearing or positioned for. We have uh, uh, the CFO of the company, Asif Malbari, joining in. Thanks a lot, Asif, for joining in. Now, before we get to the numbers, the most important thing, everyone's talking about the consumer sentiment itself. Can you give us a sense of, uh, you know, how demand has panned out, the urban consumer sentiment in particular? If you could give us a comment on that. Firstly, um, uh, if you see our uh, growth numbers in India, uh, we've delivered a, a strong performance of a 7% underlying volume growth. And we've been able to sustain a high single digit uh, volume growth. Now, within that, uh, there has been, uh, I would say, uh, some positive green shoots from a rural perspective and, and a mild kind of stress building on, on the urban side. Uh, fortunately, they've kind of compensated each other. And uh, in spite of these uh, market conditions, we've been able to stay on trajectory and deliver this performance. Asif, what's causing this weakness in urban demand, though? Yeah, so too early to comment upon it, Mangalam. I, I think uh, fundamentally we know that some time back, uh, uh, urban wars are outpacing rural. We've seen uh, rural uh, step up. Uh, there is, a, a, I would say, a mild weakness in, in urban demand. But uh, too early to kind of um, comment on whether uh, this is going to kind of uh, bounce back or, or we're going to see a weakness for a period of time. One will have to kind of just wait uh, for a little bit more time to assess the situation. Right, a little more time to assess the situation. That's the word coming in from a lot of your other peers as well, wondering whether this is temporary or not. But along with numbers, you know, you also called out inflation in Palm, especially for the margins in your soap business coming under pressure. How much lower can they go and what is the range that the street should work with compared to your earlier guidance? Typically, uh, operates between 25 to 27 percent. That's the kind of range of profitability at which this business operates. We are in the lower uh, leg of, of the margin. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to kind of give a number out in terms of what the pressure would be, a lot of uh, moving parts, because the palm oil is moving um, uh, fairly volatile uh, of late. So would we want to kind of, it, it all depends as to where these prices stabilize. And uh, it, it's more a lag effect. So we're not really worried because it's a lag effect. Uh, structurally, these margins will kind of come back to those normative range uh, for the India business. Asif, can you quantify how much will margin pressure increase by? Typically, uh, operates between 25 to 27 percent. That's the kind of range of profitability at which this business operates. We are in the lower uh, leg of, of the margin. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to kind of give a number out in terms of what the pressure would be, a lot of uh, moving parts, because the palm oil is moving um, uh, fairly volatile uh, of late. So would we want to kind of... It uh, you know, uh, just wanted to know about the international business. That's doing well. So despite the domestic margin pressure, you know, international margins have seen a sharp amount of improvement. Do you see more upside there? And what's the kind of top-line growth that you're seeing in both Indonesia and Africa from here on? So I think we're very, very happy in, which, uh, in the manner in which our overseas uh, business is kind of shaping up in terms of profitability, both in terms of the growth in absolute profitability and also in the shape of margins which we're able to deliver. Uh, there is uh, still a journey to be covered in terms of uh, where we kind of see the normative margins get to. Uh, we've spoken about our Indonesia business being uh, at normative margins uh, between around uh, 22 to 24 percent. Uh, we've spoken about uh, Africa margins uh, actually kind of uh, crossing 15 percent over a period of two years, but we've, we've been able to deliver the journey uh, ahead of time. Um, so there is still a distance to kind of cover to where the normative margin should be. Uh, so we will make all efforts to kind of get there over the next uh, year or two. Um, yeah, so I, I, I definitely believe that there is still more uh, juice to be kind of brought out in terms of the margin profile and hence the profit growth in the overall international business. And as far as the growth goes, which is the second part, uh, Indonesia has been uh, delivering well in terms of growth. We delivered a 7% UVG. We would want to sustain this business at a high single-digit UVG uh, going forward. 
Uh, as far as Africa goes, uh, for, fortunately, we still remain strong in terms of offtakes and we remain strong in terms of market share. A large portion of the uh, volume decline is coming through by virtue of we correcting the trade inventory, which in a scenario of uh, interest rates being very, very high in parts of Africa, where it's as high as 30%, 35% is the right thing to do. And uh, we, we believe that in another quarter or max another two quarters, we should be able to complete this journey and, and then get to a, an underlying volume growth. All right, let's talk about the Raymond business that you'll acquire then. On a like-to-like -like basis, how has the Raymond business grown and what proportion of the synergies have been recognized and what is remaining? No, so all the actions in terms of synergy realization has been completed and we're quite happy in which in the manner in which we are able to kind of uh, improve the margin profile of the business. So as we speak, the cost base have been uh, reduced and we're able to significantly step up the investment behind the brands. Uh, as far as the portfolio growth goes, this business is growing almost 2x that of the India growth rates. It, it's a strong uh, double digit uh, growth which uh, the business is able to deliver. And uh, we are hoping we'll be able to sustain at these higher elevated levels of growth for this business. Uh, most of the actions in terms of uh, rationalizing the portfolio, uh, the tail SKUs, etc., has been completed. So, uh, yeah, well, now it's business as usual as far as uh, these brands go. All right, you will expect to sustain Raymond's uh, growth at elevated levels, which, as you pointed out, is nearly 2x your overall business. But, uh, you know, in uh, at, at a time when uh, domestic uh, pricing pressures are coming in, will you look at cutting ad spends or will you continue with ad spends even if it's at the cost of margins in the near term? So, uh, you know, we, we've uh, called out that for us it's about uh, tomorrow before today uh, and it's about building the growth momentum going forward. Uh, even in this quarter, we've ensured that we've kind of held uh, the higher level of ad spends uh, where we are. We've also made certain other investments in terms of uh, rural uh, one operations reach uh, spends which we are continuing to kind of hold. So, um, given the fact that this margin uh, stress is temporary and uh, the margins will be restored to uh, the normative levels, definitely we will continue to kind of keep the investments on. Okay, as a final question before we let you go then. In the second half of the year, do we see double digit volumes in India or will it still be high single digits? Yeah, so. Uh, uh, we, we've kind of taken a slightly medium to long-term uh, target of kind of getting to a double-digit volume growth. I think given the current uh, market environment, uh, uh, we believe that a high single-digit volume growth uh, as things stack up now uh, would be a good performance. Uh, and then we would kind of work through to kind of get to the medium to long-term aspiration of a double-digit volume. All right, we'll take that point. Uh, thank you so much, Asif, for joining in. In the second half, uh, you will be happy with high single-digit volume growth, uh, some more quarters of margin pressure in the very near future in the Indian business. No problems for international, where there is still some juice for margin expansion. We'll speak to you after your next quarter results as well. With that, we'll slip into a short break. Actually, before we do that, let's get you a few ideas for profit coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. Today, we have Jitendra Gupta joining in with a stock. We have Cochin Shipyard, which is into shipbuilding and repairs. The company stands out due to its strong technical expertise and unique position in the market uh, with a very high entry barriers and limited competition. Currently uh, boasting a robust uh, order book of close to 22,000 crore, that is over five times its annual revenue. Cochin Shipyard is actually poised for sustained growth in the coming years. What makes now uh, a great time to look at uh, CSL, Cochin uh, Shipyard, uh, is uh, first the recent stock correction due to government's office, uh, OFS, and selling in defense stock. Uh, its stock is down to very attractive point. Recently, that made up a, a 52 week high of around 3000 rupees and then it corrected more than 50%. Moreover, CSS financials are rock solid with zero date and superior return ratios. The company has improved operational efficiency as seen in its uh, recent results. In a Q1, FY25 delivered an impressive 62% revenue growth and 77% increase in net profit. Looking ahead, I think CSL is. Uh, you know, it has guided 20 to 25 percent revenue growth in the FY25. Uh, that is driv more driven by higher execution and strong orders. 
and of course contribution from new capacities and uh, traction from exports and repair business. Moreover, the stock uh, is attractively trading at 36 times currently at uh, uh, based on FI26 estimated earnings, which is quite good. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot uh, for that. Well, on that note, let's slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Mr. Manoj Verma, who's a COO, and Rishabh Jain, who's a CFO of Bekar G Foods. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's a day of good gains on the FMCG space. Another stock which is doing well is BKG. And this is after reporting what was the strongest revenue growth in the sector so far with an 18.5% revenue growth, 15% underlying volume growth. The stock has already seen a bit of a move and today holds up with gains of almost 3 odd percent. We do have the management with us, Manoj Varma, who's the COO, and Rishabh Jain, who's the CFO of the company, joined in to discuss the quarter gone by. Thanks a lot, Manoj and Rishab for joining in. Manoj, coming up to you first, you know, first half of this year, revenues have grown at 18.5% with underlying volume growth of 15.5%. You've outpaced your earlier guidance by a bit at the first half mark itself. Now you have the festive season, you have the second half as well, which typically is stronger than the first half. So do you want to up your 13 to 15% volume growth and 2 to 4% price growth guidance for this year? Because you've already done 18.5%. Can you go up to 20% this year in terms of revenue growth? Yeah, good morning and thank you for inviting us on this channel. Uh, this quarter has certainly been a good challenge, a good quarter with the growth. So the 18.5% growth, this is inclusive of PLI. And now if we net off PLI as well, so the value growth is 16%, which is what we have delivered, right? Uh, this is led by, you know, the festive season, so which was uh, uh, sweets growth and also our gifting growth, which has helped us deliver this stuff. Going forward, we would stay with the guidance what we have given because what will happen is that in next uh, the, the quarter, so only October would be the one wherein you know we'll have the Diwali benefit. Rest two quarters would would be the same. So therefore, you know, I think we would stay with what we said. We'll continue to deliver the same growth. All right. Uh, hi, Manoj, as well as Rishab. Uh, first, uh, you know, wishing you all a good uh, festive season, and clearly your numbers are depicting that. In a market that's down, your stock is up close to 3%. So good on you all. Now, the problem is inflation uh, pressures persist. Palm oil prices, pulses prices, they continue to remain elevated. So given the kind of increase you have seen in some of your raw material costs, what kind of margins you're looking at? Because earlier you had indicated that it could improve by 40 to 50 basis points from year on as well. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you very much. So basically, we have seen uh, some, price, some pricing increase in uh, edible oil as well as a uh, few pulses but yeah overall uh, we have been very proactive in uh, passing on the prices to con to to uh, overall to market distribution and consumers that's what we're doing in uh, in september we've seen edible oil price and tax rate increase by 20 percent so we have we, we have passed on the price in october month so of course we there is two to four week delay but yeah overall we are very proactive in uh, passing on the price but overall at gross margin level what we see that we will maintain last year gross margin that's what we'll this year all right so 20% price increase, you've gone ahead and increased your prices by how much? So close to 2 to 2.5%. Because overall, it's edible oil price increase, edible oil tax rate increase was 20%. So we have a pass on the price by 2 to 2.5%. Two that, will, that will manage our margins. So what happens to your margin target? You had 13.5% as a margin target, X PLI for the entire year. Uh, increase of 40 to 50 basis points uh, year after year. Will this increase in raw material prices impact that guidance or will you continue to take price hikes until you reach that 13.5-14% sort of margins XPLI? So, our target will be close to 13.5% margin. Yeah, it looked margin, that's what we'll be, we, we are targeting for in this. Okay, and we, we, right. are very, we are seeing very good drop this year. So, good rain. So, we are seeing good drop. So, by post November, we, we, we are already looking some price correction in few raw materials. So, we are hopeful that we will cover this point. Okay, let's talk about the recent investment you all made in Hazelnut Factory. You are buying close to around 53% stake for around 131 crore rupees. What yeah. are the targets, revenue targets you all have on this particular asset? And 
53 percent is what you'll have. Where do you'll see this uh, stake headed up to? Will you make further investments? So basically, uh, this this 131 crore rupees is, is uh, into three years. So currently, we're taking 40 percent stake in this company in the, at the top valuation of 100 crore pre money, and we invested close to 61 crore rupees. So currently, 61 in next two years will phase off for the investment. So in by end of December 26, we'll 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 be holding 53 percent. That's overall. But yeah, overall, you will see the numbers which they will do. So this year they will be doing close to 665 crore top line. So we are given 1.5x of the uh, no, top line multiple where you will see uh, all the good brand, bakery brand like Theo Brema of the world who are getting 8 to 10, 8x to 10x of the uh, of top line multiple. So we we get we got this deal at a very good price and it's a very good brand. So we 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 like the brand. We see good potential in this business. They are also into artistry suites and all. So we right. see at least. Uh, 300 to 400 crore top line in the next 5 to 6 years. 300 to 400 crore top line in the next 5 to 6 years. Does that mean the remainder yeah. of the investment then comes in at a multiple of 1.5 times of 300 to 400 crores? Because then that would mean that, you know, you're looking at at least 200-300 uh, crore of outflow for you to go ahead and buy the remaining stake. Is that a possibility? So, basically, we will we'll hold 53% in the company. Uh, so, that's how in the next two, year, next two years we have kept the... Overall valuation, and we'll we'll be investing balance seventy crore rupees in next two years. So we'll and be what are the margins the that this business after. operates on? What are the margins that this business operates on? Margins and return on capital employed? So largely uh, overall the margin EBITDA level they are working at close to 12 13 percent, and it, this this will increase to 15 to 20 percent in next three four years. They, they are nice. having a very good margin. All right, take that point. Thank you so much for joining in. We'll probably you know uh, have another word at another time to discuss this particular acquisition in further detail. But for now, we'll take the fact that you're looking at 300 to 400 crore revenue coming in in this business over the next three to four years with margins improving closer to 15 to 20 percent from 12 to 13 percent over that period itself. Uh, wish you and, uh, you know, everyone at the team a very, very happy Diwali from all of us at CNBC TV 18. Thank you very much and happy Diwali to all of you. With that, we'll step into a short break. Come back on the other side. We'll talk about a lot of other stocks that are buzzing around. Welcome back. Well, the markets have taken another leg down. Now we're down closer on 300 points. Remember, in terms of a support level, the next reference point on the doubt side is 24,000, 24,050. And the Indus and Bank is a stock really to focus on. It breached the 1,000 rupee mark and now it's clawed back a little bit. But that's the important stock, I think, uh, to track because it's down closer on 18%. Sriram Finance has taken a hard knock now. Just take a look at that. Actually, Indus and Bank's day's low is 1,035 rupees. So keep an eye out on that. Sriram Finance has moved lower. And Trent, the one that has rallied big time, that as well has come in for some profit-taking, Manglam. Those are the large caps that you spoke about, Nigel. But don't lose sight of the mid-cap yeah. index. Down almost 1,600 points right now. And soon, you know, when we look at all the indices above our screen, you'll see the mid-cap index is down 3%. And now it has entered correction zone. It has corrected 10% from its 52-week high after the move that we've seen in just the last few minutes. So we'll keep an eye out on the indices, 2,000 stocks, 2,200 stocks declining for just less than 200 stocks, which are advancing right now. Thank you so much for watching Chartbusters. You see all the indices in a deep shade of red. We'll take your leave. The team of Trading Art comes up next.